Hello Internet, welcome to the Well of Curiosity, a place where we're exploring the universe using science, maths and a bit of imagination. So recently I got a request to talk about the ozone layer, uh, but I thought whilst I'm at it I might as well cover the whole atmosphere. So here it is, my quick guide to Earth's atmosphere. Now our atmosphere is incredibly important to us. It's that wonderful collection of gases that keeps us all alive, keeping us breathing, keeping us warm, protecting us from some of the more dangerous elements of outer space. There are many planets and moons of our solar system that will have an atmosphere, but they will all be different with different combinations of gases. Now here on the Earth, our own atmosphere is comprised of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and then the remaining 1% made of things like argon, carbon dioxide, neon, helium, hydrogen, and water vapor. Now the atmosphere here on Earth is divided into five distinctive layers, all based on things like temperature and composition. So what we're gonna do is we'll start off near the bottom and then we'll work our way gradually up the sequence until we reach the edge of our atmosphere and the start of space. So let us start at the bottom in the troposphere. Now this is the layer that we live in. It's around 12 miles thick and it contains around 75% of all the air in our atmosphere, as well as most of the water vapour and dust. So this is the layer where we get clouds forming and this is the layer where we experience many of our day-to-day -day weather events. Now I think it is worth mentioning that as we start to rise up through the air it is going to become a lot thinner. Now at the moment we are at the bottom with all of that air above us pushing down on the air underneath, compressing it all together. But as we start to rise up there's going to be less and less air above us that air is going to begin to expand, to spread out, and the air is going to become a lot thinner and a lot colder too. But if we keep on travelling, we will enter the second layer, the stratosphere, between 12 and 31 miles up. Now this is where we find much of the ozone in our atmosphere, that all-important ozone layer. Now this is our shield against high energy ultraviolet radiation that's trying to reach us from the sun. Now that ultraviolet radiation would do some serious damage both to us as human beings and to a lot of the wildlife here on the earth. But this is where ozone comes in handy because it does such a good job of absorbing that high energy, keeping it away from us. But we do have a bit of a problem. Over the years we've released so many chemicals out into our environment and there's a group of chemicals in particular known as CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, and they've been released and they have caused significant damage to the ozone layer. Now the ozone is constantly whizzing around, breaking apart and then reforming again. The CFCs stop the ozone from reforming, so we're losing some of our protective shield. So much so that there's now actually almost a, a hole of sorts. Uh, well, not really a hole, but uh, an, an area where the ozone has become spread so thin that it's becoming very, very ineffective and it's allowing more of that dangerous radiation through. But there is some good news. We have significantly reduced the amount of CFCs that we're releasing and the ozone layer appears to be on the mend. Scientists have been monitoring that hole in our ozone layer and it looks like it's starting to shrink. In fact, last year it was the smallest it has ever been since its discovery. Now it is going to take quite a long time for it to fully recover, but if we do our bit fully recover, it hopefully will. Even though it may not seem like much, you can help. The next time you need to buy a machine like a fridge or freezer, check what chemicals are used inside and you can help make a difference. Now, onto our third layer, the mesosphere. Now, there's not a lot we really know about the mesosphere, and that's because it's too high up for uh, our aircraft and our weather balloons to study, and it's too low, really, for our spacecraft. 
But there are a couple of things we do know. This is by far and away the coldest part of our atmosphere, with an average temperature of minus 90 degrees Celsius. And this is also the zone in our atmosphere where we believe rocks will start to burn up as they approach our planet from outer space. This is where we get meteors, those wonderful streaks of light, those fireballs streaking across our sky as they head down to Earth. So onto our fourth layer, the thermosphere, rising nearly 600 miles into the sky. This air up here is incredibly thin. This is where most people normally think of our atmosphere sort of starting to merge with outer space. In fact, this is the part of our atmosphere where you find the International Space Station, as well as quite a few of the satellites that we've put up there over the years. Now, this is also the first time where the temperature, instead of going down, actually starts to go up. And that's because the particles up here in this part of the atmosphere, they're absorbing ultraviolet and X-rays coming in from space. So even though there are not many particles, they are incredibly, incredibly energetic. And now we have reached our final layer, the exosphere. This is really where our atmosphere meets outer space. Now there is no sudden stop to our atmosphere. It just keeps gradually getting thinner and thinner and thinner. Up here, the atmosphere is just a few very widely spread particles of hydrogen, helium and oxygen, all whizzing around, some of them so quickly and so far away that they can break free of Earth's gravity and whiz off and escape into outer space. So that concludes our trip through the atmosphere. If you have enjoyed this video, then like, share, subscribe if you're new. And if you do have any questions or topics, whether they're in space or down here on Earth, that you would like me to cover in a future video, then please comment below. But in the meantime, keep being curious, keep asking questions, and I shall see you in the next video. See you soon.